Okay, so we are going to read this article just to collect a little bit more evidence maybe about how other scientists have studied this question um, and just see if we can find out a little bit more about what is happening to atoms during a chemical reaction. So our title is What Happens When Fuel Burns? So I'm guessing if I do my title pre-think here, uh, this article probably has something to do with fuel and a chemical reaction that involves burning. And I'm going to go ahead and get my um, highlighter here so that I can highlight really key parts um, that I'm figuring out. Most people burn fuels every single day. Fuels are substances that release energy when they burn. They are very important to us because we use the energy from burning fuels to do many things, such as run cars and buses, heat homes and cook food. For example, gasoline is the fuel used in most car engines. When it burns, the energy it releases makes the car move. This kind of reminds me of energy storage molecules in populations and resources. It's kind of interesting here. To prepare for a long trip, you fill your gas tank with gasoline, but after you drive for a while, the tank is empty and you need to fill it up again. What happened to the gasoline? Where did it go? So I'm actually going to use my pen here to circle this because this really is our key question what is happening to atoms, right? And this is telling me, great, we're gonna get some answers in our article here. When we burn something, whether it is a log or a match, gasoline in our gas tank, what we are actually doing is causing a chemical reaction. Great, so we kind of knew this already that a chemical reaction um, is burning. Burning gasoline may not seem like the kinds of chemical reactions that you have seen before. After all, chemical reactions cause substances to change into other substances as the atoms of the reactants rearrange to form the products. So I'm just gonna put a little check here because this is something that we've figured out. It's all about, and this key term, I'm gonna get my highlighter, atoms, reactants rearranging to form the products, right? This is really key. A lot of our key words in here. Substances change. When gasoline burns, it doesn't seem to change into a different substance. Instead, it seems to disappear, leaving you with an empty tank. If burning gasoline actually causes a chemical reaction to happen, then why doesn't your tank fill up with a different substance? Can a chemical reaction cause something to change into nothing? Okay, so here again, I'm going to, to circle this part because this is telling me, hopefully we're gonna answer this question here. What is going on um, in, with the atoms in a reaction? Scientists began to wonder about this question back in the 1700s. Around this time, a French scientist named Antoine Lavoisier began studying what happens to the masses of substances before and after a chemical reaction. So again, remember this is the mass is measure of how much matter makes up an object, right? So we found this using um, our scale when we did our investigations. First, Lavoisier measured the mass of two reactants before mixing them to cause a chemical reaction. We did this too. After the reaction had happened, he measured the mass of the products. So this is really key. We wanna know the before and the after. Every time Lavoisier found that the reactants in the products had the same mass. Okay, this is huge. I'm gonna underline this part and star it. So his results confirm what we are seeing in the digital model and also in our investigations. Through these experiments, Lavoisier helped come up with an idea we now call the law of conservation of matter. Matter cannot be created or destroyed during chemical reactions. Okay, I'm gonna actually circle this and even 
highlight it as well because it seems like this is a huge new idea. We haven't heard of what this is called before, but it seems like what we have been observing is named the law of conservation of matter. Matter cannot be created or destroyed during chemical reactions. This is because the atoms that make up all matter cannot be created or destroyed during chemical reactions. So atoms are not being created or destroyed. This law tells us that all of the atoms that go into a chemical reaction must come out in the form of one substance or another. Chemical reactions cause atoms to rearrange into new and different groups, but the atoms themselves never stop existing and new atoms never appear out of nowhere. Again, I'm gonna underline this because this really provides me with evidence of our question. This tells me that these atoms must be accounted for in the reactants and the products. So what does the law of conservation of matter have to do with burning gasoline? It means that even though your gas tank is empty, the atoms that form the gasoline must still exist somewhere in some form. So even when things appear to be empty, the gas tank is empty, the atoms formed the gasoline must still exist somewhere. So maybe they're a gas and they've become obviously not visible anymore. Maybe they've become something that you can't see. The only reason that these atoms seem to disappear, this is the key word, right? Seem to disappear is because the substances that form when gasoline burns are invisible gases. But as we knew from our uh, phase change unit, there are still atoms in those gases. It's just, they're so spread out that we are not able to see them with our eyes. You can't see them, but they are there. And sometimes that isn't a good thing. Okay, so this is again, the, uh, the part that we saw yesterday, these different types of fuel. Again, um, I'm gonna actually go ahead and count out the atoms. So one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogen. And also here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven oxygen, four, five, six, seven oxygen again over here. Four hydrogen, this is what we saw in the digital model. Four hydrogen here, two, and two over here. So all of those atoms are being accounted for. This is awesome. This really helps me to understand more about Westfield and that this law of conservation of matter is telling me that we may need to be checking out the Westfield water once more. Because during a chemical reaction, atoms cannot be created or destroyed. They are simply rearranged. We need to go back and think about what this means for our reaction in Westfield.